So we're here talking about American Daughter, also called Trial by Media. But I'm not, you know, I don't want any American or any citizen of the world to be tried by the media. I'm not trying to be tried at all, if I'm perfectly honest, but if I were to be tried, being tried by the media, I think, is the worst way to go. I'd rather take trial by combat. <laughs> Game of Thrones style. Game of Thrones reference number one. Because now, more than ever, the media is a circus. And yeah, sure, the circus is fun, Cirque du Soleil. See people flipping up and down, yeah. See horses. Yes, it's a play, but you go to the circus to see animal cruelty and eat animal crackers, not justice. <laughs> Can you imagine a jury box filled with media? Smiling faces caked with thick 4K makeup foundation, trial by talking head. This is not my beautiful house. This is not a jury of my peers. And the days go by, water's flowing underground. <laughs> Same as it ever was? No. Because tonight, we're flipping the script. Trial by media? Nah. We're putting the media on trial, y'all. Yeah! Media, jacuse. <laughs> jacuse you, media of manipulation. <laughs> of valuing profits over people. Of infotaining us to death. Of dividing the country all the way to the bank. And then when they bailed out the banks, because the banks were making us broke, you make sure that we didn't get too mad at the banks for that. And what have you given us in return, media? Scandals, wars, and Donald Trump. <laughs> and why? To sell pharmaceuticals and toilet paper? Shame. 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 Shame bell. Shame bell ringing. Game of Thrones reference, too. Somewhere along the line, <laughs> media, your ethics seem to have failed you. Probably right at the start, because there was never a Hippocratic oath for the press. More of a hypocritical oath. First, do harm. <laughs> then, write about it. <laughs> Finally, profit. Now I will show to you, the judge and jury, plain and clear that there is ample evidence to convict the media with the crime of running everything, especially America, into the ground. Here are the facts, as shown by your portrayal in the TV movie, Trial by Media. Exhibit one, dildos on morning TV. It's too early for that, folks. I mean, and this was very predictive, I have to say, of the future of now, made in 1998 by the great Wendy Wasserstein. She couldn't predict that morning TV shows now are just full-on people drinking wine at 7 a.m., <laughs> popping bottles of pink rosé, and just like the dildos, that's fine, but it's too early. It's just too early. Exhibit two. The casual brunch interview of the presumptive Surgeon General of the United States. Now, many of you know, like me, of course, that the presumptive Surgeon General brunch interview has been a TV staple for years. Who can forget the C. Everett Coop brunch with Barbara Walters, <laughs> both weeping over breakfast tacos and Bloody Marias? Or the legendary Wolf Blitzer slurping mimosas with Jocelyn Elders before she said that sex education should include masturbation and was fired by Bill Clinton. By the way, TV movie makers, where's that TV movie? <laughs> People say traditional media is dying. Well, it's probably because the tr presumptive Surgeon General media brunch has fallen out of favor. <laughs> Sidebar, if I may approach the bench, thank you, your honors. What the heck does the Surgeon General do anyway? Honestly, I have no idea. Command an army of doctors? Fighting a war against illness? Talk about a quagmire. I mean, what's the exit strategy of fighting sickness? The weirdest thing about the Surgeon General, it's not a joke, is they are actually an admiral. They are a rear admiral. Yeah, that's their rank. So they are a general admiral. Makes no sense. Exhibit three. Timber Tucker. The character played by the great Jay Thomas, very accurately named media man, whose name literally means one who tucks one's timber, as he does when faced with such a powerful and complex woman as the presumptive Surgeon General Admiral of the United States. Now, Timber Tucker doesn't have a dog in this race, he doesn't have a horse in this race, not even at the racetrack, okay? 
Yet, he seems interested in doing his job, which is raking a politician across the coals if they make one tiny mistake. Now, who hasn't judged, dodged a jury summons? Raise your hand if you've dodged a jury summons. <laughs> Bailiff, get them! Liars! Criminals! Just kidding. No. I'm not the media. Sidebar, if I could approach, Your Honors, uh, I want to talk about how incredibly dumb it was of everyone involved in this play and TV movie to be talking during the presumptive Surgeon General Admiral media brunch about jury duty. I mean, it's, it's like religion and politics. What you do between you and your jury summons is your business. <laughs> and sidebar. But then Timber Tucker invites her on his show for the big climactic interview. Everyone is there. Everyone is watching. Timber Tucker hits her with the big tough questions, family questions. He gives no quarter, and the result is a brutal massacre, which seems to be what he wanted the entire time. And for us all, they want. How many train wrecks do we have to watch? All of them. The press is not our friend. The press is a bully at school, not the one who pantses you, but the one who takes a picture when your pants are down. <laughs> It's just gossip. All of news is just gossip. It's an addicting thrill, thrill that makes you feel bad. The media has done nothing, I say, to, but divide us. Since 1987, when the FCC Fairness Doctrine was repelled, a law that required broadcasters to present both sides of a controversial issue. Once that law was revoked, it led to Fox News. One side of the issue only on one network. And then the liberal counterpart, MSNBC, which means that Never once have I watched the news since 1987 and felt better about myself or the world, ever. Not once. Not even when they do a cute story about puppies at the end. I know it's a cheap manipulation move. I'm on to you, Tom Brokaw. And, and, and who do we get mad at when we watch? Well, we get mad at the other channel that we skip over. I'm not going to watch that. They don't get it. Why? Because the screen said so. And the screen never tells us to get mad at the screen. It's a black mirror, guys. It's a scrying mirror. You know what a scrying mirror is? A magical instrument made of black that you can see the future and past. But magic always comes with a price. The lame screen media taps directly into our fear, activating our fight or flight, so that they may run their advertisements with Colgate and their Geico. And of course, we, our anxiety rays and the antidote they give to soothe our anxiety, consumption. And the new media, mm -hmm, the new media is not better. The new blogosphere twitter -o bots <laughs> This represented by the character of Moral McCarthy, played by the great Mark Feuerstein. He is a columnist. This is the 90s. Obviously, he'll be a Twitter personality now. He is presented and presents himself as a friend of the family, but he's not a friend. He is the new media. Meet the new boss. Same as the old boss. As he, and he knows that what gets the most shares online is content that induces rage. He casually brings up embarrassing things just for the likes, the clicks. Hi, I'm not your friend. Please retweet me. And what of Quincy Quince, the character played by the great Blake Lindsay, the feminist gender studies head talking head pundit uh, whose name sounds like a rap lyric? <laughs> what would you get for a Quincy Quince? Does she stand up upright morally? Unfortunately, no. First of all, she comes in wearing tight leather pants at the sacred media brunch of the presumptive Sumer Church in general of the United States. Big faux pas. Then she makes out with the husband of the prospective attorney general, admiral, in their house during the sacred traditional media brunch, practicing, of course, the traditional time-honored feminist tradition of smashing the patriarchy by sleeping with her married professor. <laughs> Quincy Quince heard the word intersectional and thought it was spelled with an X. And what does Quincy Quince do? She gets on TV and blah blahs about the scandal. She uses the scandal as a springboard. She's like a feminist little finger. And to her, chaos is a ladder. G-O-T, number three. She did nothing to help the situation. She's exploited it for personal gain. Easy, breezy, beautiful Quincy Quince. So who is guilty? Well, obviously everyone, us, yes, we, the people, the public who consumes the media, we have two different medias for our two different political parties, and we wonder why it seems like the other side is living in a different reality. They do. <laughs> they are letting the propaganda of Fox News determine their reality, how they see the world. But the other side is not better. My own mother is so hopelessly addicted to Rachel Maddow, she thinks I am a Russian bot. <laughs> I would, 
not only her, like I had a friend, I told her I voted for Jill Stein, she spat in my face. I said, okay, well, I have been voting Green Party since mm, George Bush invaded Iraq. That, and did Russians make him do that? I wanted to pull my hair up. The thing I notice more and more is that people are, going, are starting to go no contact. or cutting people off who have different political views. They can't talk to each other at all. Triggered by discordant propaganda. But I, I think it's important to remember when we talk about triggering, the trigger is not the most important part of the gun. We all have emotional live ammunition inside of us. And we must diffuse that emotional ammunition. So not to be triggered, or if we do get triggered, then it's just a dud. <laughs> Doesn't go off. I mean, why do they share only stories that make us so mad? Is the world getting this much worse every day? Maybe. Definitely maybe. But is it also that the media companies have discovered by hook or by crook that the thing that is shared most often on social media is outrage. Outrage is an emotion that we don't want to feel by ourselves. We have to be like, hey, look, this sucks, right? And we share it with our friends, look, it sucks. And our friends are like, yeah, it sucks, totally sucks. And yet, that takes that proper righteous anger, which we do need to make positive change in this world, and they channel it towards what? Nothing. The media has abused our righteous anger. We have to feel it to make things better. But the media never funnels it toward anything that could make meaningful change. The news will tell you what to be angry about. They won't tell you what to do about it. They speak to us like we're the joint chiefs. Like they're, they're giving us a brief and we're all the president and we have some tremendous power. But all the power we have is to buy, we choose between which toilet paper they advertise. All they want you to do is be outraged, screaming on the couch, eating snacks. <laughs> more divided, more conquered. And yet our task is to rise and continue. Rise and continue. And so media, I deem you guilty. Guilty of manipulation, of dishonesty, of controlling the minds of the most gullible people on earth. Americans. And I sentence you to stop being so selfish. It's time to stop being the media and start being the weedia. <laughs> And yes, that was the first marijuana reference of this piece. Thank you very much.